Hello everybody, I'm Sean Spaulding and this is an awesome free open source lighting system for Game Maker Studio 2. It's put together by my friend Jobo and I'm making this tutorial to show you how you can get started using it and how to build a scene that looks something like this. It's completely free to use, you can grab it on the marketplace right now for zero dollars, zero cents, zero pounds. I highly recommend doing so. So once you've acquired the extension by whatever means, the first thing you're going to want to do is actually bring it into your project. I'm going to assume you've done it through the marketplace because that's where I'm going to go get it. So I'm going to marketplace my library. Um, if you added it to your account a while you still had Gaming Studio 2 open, you might want to hit this button and refresh your library, which will just get the latest list of all the things that you own. Um, let's come over to L Lighting System 2D. And once you've downloaded it by the download button, you'll just see this button here ready, the import button. So just click that, uh, Game Maker will extract it, and then you can choose what you want to add to the project. Now the extension comes with a demo setup. If you just want to dive in and see like all the different kinds of things you can do with it, uh, feel free to just add everything to a test project that you, you save out as like a demo. But we don't... Uh, if we're just working with the system, we just want to add the system to a project, uh, all we need to do is add the things that are in the lighting folders, okay? Everything is stored nicely in folders for you. You just want to add all of the um, lighting folders. So I'm just going to control click in sprites lighting, and scripts lighting, shaders lighting, objects lighting, and uh, in notes lighting as well. So it's some important license stuff and so on in there. Hit add once you've got all of those things selected. Uh, and just make sure those are all, yep, yeah, they're all coming in. Um, as I say, we don't need the demo ones. And then just hit import. Okay, and that'll bring it in. I should talk about what was in this uh, this project before we actually get started. I've got one room with nothing in it, just the basic set of instance backgrounds and a simple tiled floor uh, that we're going to be using and uh, a crate texture. Okay, <laughs> just to create a crate that we can use um, to bounce some lights off and cast some shadows. Okay, and then obviously all the lighting stuff. We don't need to unfold these really or um, take too much of a look at everything there. You can do that at your own leisure. I'm just here to show you how to set it up. But if we go into objects uh, lighting, you can see we've got four objects that this whole system is based around and then all of these tap into the various shaders and scripts and sprites and so on that uh, work under the hood to create uh, the lighting engine. So the first thing we need to do to set this up is we need to put two of these objects into uh, the game, okay? And that's object lighting in it, which will set up the whole um, lighting engine. You might want to do this in a previous room, like in an initialization room or something. Um, it is a persistent object, so it will carry across uh, from room to room. Uh, but if you're in a hurry, what you can do is just make sure once you've uh, placed it on whatever layer, um, if this is just the first room in your game, just make sure that an instance creation order in your room, uh, just make sure object lighting in it is at the top because it needs to establish loads of like important global variables and stuff that the rest of the system needs to use. So uh, it needs to be created before you do anything else. All right. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a second instance layer. Um, I'm gonna call it light render or like you can call it whatever you want, um, but What's important about this layer is it's going to be a layer that sits on top of everything else and I'm going to drag in object uh, underscore light renderer into here, okay? And this is the object that controls actually rendering um, uh, the shadows and the lights um, into the game. So you want to make sure that it's above any object that you want to involve in that lighting system, okay? If you've got a GUI and menu, maybe you want that stuff above the, the renderer, but um, Anything actually affected by the lighting in any way needs to be below this uh, object, okay? So once that's in the room, uh, we can go ahead and start actually setting up some shadow casters and lights. Okay, now that we've got those two things in, they won't actually do anything by themselves until we have some lights and shadows. Like if it doesn't find any lights to cast and no, uh, no objects to cast shadows, um, it won't do anything. Cause there's not really a whole lot of point, right? <laughs> um, so we're going to make some lights and shadows and get them set up in here um, to show you the basics of things. So what I could do for lights is I already have obj underscore light in here. I could just drag that into the instances layer um, because it is, it's already got a bunch of default values set up. But what you probably want to do instead is actually create a child object of that. So I'm going to go into objects, right click, um, and call this just o test light for now. Um, go not to physics, to parent, 
and make this a child of OBJ in school, like you can see it inherits all those scripts um, and inherits all these variable definitions and we can modify these um, to our heart's content. Uh, but we're just going to leave it at all the default settings for now. I'm just going to plonk um, just like a couple of these in the room, just like like there and there or whatever. You might even want to set them to have that same sprite if that's helpful for you as well. Just like this little uh, light sprite that comes with a Lang Ninja. Just so you can see these little light bulbs and it reminds you what they are. Up to you. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's not going to show the sprite either way. So we've got a couple of lights in there. This still won't do anything because we still don't have anything casting shadows. Um, you can see in our uh, lighting, we've got obj underscore shadow caster. So what we want to do now is make children of this object. So again, in objects, hit create object and call this o crate. Set the sprite to be s crate and then make it a child of object shadow caster. Okay, and you can see in the create event, it's uh, inherited all those things. Um, but we need to do some more things to tell it kind of what types of shadows we actually wanted to cast. Okay, so let's just give ourselves a bit of space here. Um, I'm going to add a new create event. Now, we don't want to overwrite the create event um, that's coming from OBG Shadow Caster, uh, but we want to just add to it. So in order to make sure we don't get rid of that stuff, I want to type event inherited as the first thing in here. So it'll just pull uh, pull code directly from the create event from um, OBJ Shadowcaster, okay? And then the next thing I wanna do is define a polygon for the crate, okay? I'm gonna type polygon equals. Now what I mean, a polygon is just um, an arbitrary shape defined by a number of points. Um, and we're defining a shape that represents the shape of this instance in order for the lighting engine to know how to cast uh, shadows from this instance, right? You know, what shape is the object that's um, going to define our shadows? Uh, in this case, instance, it's just uh, a simple box. Um, so we have uh, a function in the engine that's uh, built specifically for this, which is polygon from instance ID. So the, I'm just going to pass in the ID of this instance to the script, and it's going to take its um, bounding box, um, even if it's like rotated as well, it'll work that out. And uh, create a nice four point uh, polygon from which to cast shadow. And that's all we actually need. And that's all we need to really get started. So if we come back to our room now, and you remember these two lights that we've got set up here. Um, if I, oh, one thing to remember, if you uh, are gonna use this icon for these lights, um, you probably wanna untick visible from the object. Um, just so it doesn't show its <laughs> show that actual sprite in the game. Um, so we've got these two lights. Let's just place um, some crates around now. Okay, let's place a handful of these around the place. Um, we'll uh, rotate a couple. Let's create a nice little more interesting scene. Uh, just put them nice and close places where these lights are actually going to hit them. And then run that. Uh, the first thing you'll notice when you run this, when you've got lights and casters in the scene, is everything just gets way darker, right? Uh, there's a global level of ambience that's applied when the system's running, which will apply a global level of darkness, um, which you can adjust um, as one of the main, main variables of the engine uh, very easily. So you can make it brighter or darker as you need to, but obviously you want some level of darkness in order to actually create light and cast shadows, right? Um, so as you can see, this is working. We've got two lights uh, here and here, and they're casting shadows on these crates. Pretty nice. Um, you see it balances out with the, the lights as well. The lights mix and match very nicely and evenly, and it all looks super good. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to uh, move the light around the scene so we can see how uh, the system sort of dynamically reacts to moving lights and so on, um, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to close this down now. I'm going to get rid of one of these lights, so we're just going to have one light that we just sort of move around the scene. Um, let's come to O test light, our, um, our light object, which is just a default light. It's just inheriting from uh, lights in the way they work. If you go to the create event that you've inherited, um, you can see that how this ends up working is it creates a, um, uh, there's a variable called light in here that you can see gets assigned a, a whole bunch of pro uh, properties from uh, uh, a script light create point. Um, now, how you manipulate those properties in real time? Let's uh, let's add a step event to this because we're going to move it around with the mouse. Uh, move light with the mouse. 
is that light actually uh, seems to be a DS list. So we can access elements of a DS list by opening a square bracket, typing uh, this uh, a vertical line, and then a space, and then typing the name of the element that we wish to access. If you type E light, which I presume is for enum light, right? Um, and yeah, select that and a dot. Um, you can see there's all different kinds of fields that you can attach to um, E light, uh, this enum. So this uh, references all the different entries of um, of the DS list that stores the properties about light. And what we want to change is the X and Y of the light. You can see in the law all kinds of things you can change the intensity range and so on, all the things that you can define in the variable definitions of the object. So if I just change the X, so E light dot X, uh, I'm going to set that to equal mouse X. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing with Y. So light E light dot y square bracket equals mouse y. Okay, uh, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So if I run that now, that's every step is just going to modify the x and y of the light to be wherever the mouse is. And you see all the shadows updating nice and cleanly to match and to follow. There you have it guys, there's how you use the very basics of this system. There's so much more to it as well. There's different flags that you can set the shadow casters to have. Um, there's different colors of lights you can do. You can uh, create polygons for different shaped objects rather than just squares, obviously. Um, you can create shadows uh, for a shadow casters from paths and all kinds of different things. But the code's all really well commented, so I recommend you just dive in there. Um, and take a look at it. It's, as I say, completely free to use. It's there to be used. So go ahead and pick this up. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you guys next time. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting what I do, and thank you in particular to the following Bowser the Dog, Bertie T, Daka Dondago, Eric Matthew Hibbs, Jagust, Jason McMillan, Joseph Wetmore, Kimo Savalampi, Mark Lintz, Martin Barasevic, Matt Coat, Michael Ward, Owen Morgan, Patrick Guffey, Relentless Rex. Robert Churches, Rovan Darlin, Run, Stephen Hagen, and Zinan May. Thank you all so much. I couldn't do any of this without your support. I'll catch you all next time.